It's 7.20pm on August 29th, 2024, and an unnamed miner and her grandmother are at the Key Foods supermarket on 213th Street and Jamaica Avenue in Queens, New York, to grab some groceries. It's a typical day, nothing out of the ordinary, and before they go for their shop, the grandmother decides she needs to go to the restroom, so off she goes. However, when she leaves her granddaughter's side, something horrific occurs. While waiting, 64-year-old Queens native Wayne Knoll approaches the young girl. He then grabs her by the hair, takes her out of the store, pushes her into his vehicle, and drives off to a quiet area nearby. He's just abducted her. Not only that though, ladies and gentlemen, because when they arrived at this quiet place, he went on to sexually assault the young girl. Fortunately though, a member of the public noticed what was going on and rushed towards the car to help. Their heroic actions forced Wayne to flee from the scene in his vehicle, and thankfully the girl was saved. However, ladies and gentlemen, it was short-lived. This isn't where the story ends. You see, Wayne only fled from the specific location, not the general area. He would go on to return to the Key Food supermarket parking lot after fleeing in the hopes that he'd come across the girl once again. And that's exactly what happened. It isn't entirely clear why the girl was by herself after being saved by the Samaritan or why police weren't called. But someone should have been with her to make sure that she got back to her grandma safely, just in case something was to happen. And sadly, as you know, it did. The girl wouldn't make it back to her grandma on that occasion because when Wayne spotted her, he abducted her again and proceeded to sexually assault her in his car. With such a disgusting incident taking place and the suspect being bold enough to commit the same act on the same victim back to back within the same hour, it forced the NYPD to deploy a major task force to hunt down Wayne. Hunt for the man police say sexually assaulted a nine-year-old girl in Queens. Now take a look at an image of the man who police are looking for. Police say that the girl was with her grandmother shopping at a store when she was abducted, sexually assaulted, and then returned to the same store. Eyewitness News reporter Kristen Thorne live in Queens Village with the very latest. Kristen. Dave and Lauren, this is such a disturbing story. This is the key food where the little girl was inside there last night with her grandmother shopping, and that's when this all happened. We still have a number of detectives in this area walking around looking for surveillance video. The NYPD wants to find this guy as quickly as possible. Let's show his photo again. This is the man they're looking for. They say that he abducted this nine-year-old girl inside the key food in Queens Village around 7 o'clock last night. They they say he put her in a brown Honda Civic. We're going to show you the picture of the car, drove her away, forced her to perform a lewd act in the vehicle, and then drove her back to the area of key food. The girl was brought to the hospital to be checked out. People who live in this neighborhood, they are appalled, disgusted. You use the word. That is how people are feeling in this neighborhood about this incident. I've never seen people do that stuff. Like, I, I just don't understand why people act that way. Like, it's, you know, it's a kid. I mean, my granddaughter's one's 15 and a half, the other one's 16. I just can't imagine. Oh, it, it's, oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. The NYPD is vowing to find this guy, calling his actions the epitome of evil. And they say they are trusting that the community here is also going to be keeping an eye out for this guy. There is a $3,500 reward for information. With pretty much every officer in the local and nearby areas assigned to the manhunt, it's to no surprise that Wayne would be tracked down within 24 hours. At around 12.30 p.m. the following day, officers would attempt to pull him over. However, he refused to stop. This is what happened towards the end of the chase. An entire task force was initiated, 
all members of our detective bureau dedicated to this mission. This is why we became cops. At approximately 1230 today, members observed the vehicle, tremendously distinguishable vehicle, in the vicinity of 212 Street and Hillside Avenue and attempted to pull that vehicle over. The driver refused and recklessly drove through a stop sign and struck another vehicle. As a result, that driver was seriously injured. Responding officers attempted life-saving measures. That subject was removed to New York Presbyterian Hospital where the subject unfortunately perished. That same subject has since been identified as our perpetrator for the horrific sexual assault. The subject is identified as Wayne Noel, a male 64 years old, resides at 8691 208 Street in Queens. Four arrests on the sheet, the last being a robbery in 2022 in that incident using the exact same vehicle pictured behind us. I just want to note, we had the greatest detectives in the world working this caper, and this was solved in less than 18 hours. But more importantly, we gave just a little piece of dignity back to this young survivor. And with that, we'll open up to questions. Well, we had individuals that were very familiar with the subject um, look not only at the video inside of the location, but other measures. They positively identified the subject, and um, now, now we, we're at a good point of the investigation. Okay, we're going to move over to uh, Anthony DiLorenzo. Chief, can you tell us if the subject actually did work for the MTA? Um, if not, why he might have been wearing that hat? Um, and what you know about his background? Yeah, right, right now we are working very closely with our MTA partners. We're not certain that he did work for the MTA now or presently but that's all part of the investigation. We'll be able to say with certainty very closely. Okay, we're gonna move over to Rebecca Greenberg from the up one. Um, you said that the suspect had four prior arrests. Were any of them uh, sexually in nature? As of right now, no. Okay, we're gonna move over to Steve Vago from the airport. Can you elaborate with his other um, prior arrests? You mentioned the robbery. Uh, the, the robbery was in 2022. It was on Queens Boulevard. Uh, the, the fact pattern is very similar to this in that he uh, approached the female, try, attempted to grab her, um, forcefully took that victim into the vehicle, um, drove in the vehicle. Fortunately enough, that female was able to get out of the vehicle. He also um, brandished a knife during that encounter. Yes, that, that, that is affirmative. Okay, we have time for one more question. Go over to Mark Santia from uh, WNBC. So Chief, can you talk a little bit about, you mentioned the 18-hour window. You talked about the officers and detectives that report this down. They see it on their smartphones. How do they spot that car? How does that show to them? Yeah, I mean, we have technology that is blasted out to every single officer. We have 35,000 officers, not to mention our community. You know, this was given to the media. Everybody had pictures of this. And we, we asked the community, as always, Put on your little detective shield. You know, we all work together and we had a great outcome. I just want to give a shout out to our special victims crew. You know, this team over and over again has done such a tremendous turnover and we will once again. All right, folks, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To their surprise, when officers made contact with Wayne immediately after the crash, he was alive and breathing. However, he would later die in hospital. It's quite rare that we get to hear from a victim, especially a minor, so soon after an incident like this has taken place. But the New York Post has managed to get a statement from her. I want to share the young girl's testimony because I think it's important to understand the impact an incident like this can have on a child. And at the age of just nine years old, she's essentially been handed a life sentence. 
but it's been forced upon her quite literally out of nowhere. Her aunt speaks on her behalf and she tells reporters that the event continues to haunt her days on. Her niece can't get Wayne out of her head. The young girl continues to tell her family that she feels like she's in some kind of bad dream, but keeps snapping back to reality and realizes that this incident actually happened to her. She's been unable to eat. Our entire family have been left reeling. We're in a state of shock. Even now, we still can't believe it. We can't believe this happened. She told me that he walked up to her, held her hand very tightly, and forced her to the car. While they were leaving, she said she was trying to cause a scene, but he shouted in her ear, Shut up, be quiet, or I'll kill you. She was so scared, that's the word she used, scared. She didn't know what to do. She told me that she thinks he's still coming to kill her. I told her, this fool is already dead. He can't do nothing to you. But still, she thinks he's coming because he stays on her mind. I believe she's extremely traumatized. This is something she won't ever forget. She may not be able to understand it fully now, but later on, she's going to grow up and it's going to affect her. And this is what these evil predators don't understand. Well, some of them are just that evil that they do understand, but they simply don't care. For a few minutes of gratification, these evil people destroy not only the lives of innocent children, but the lives of their innocent families as well. The child's relationships, mental health, life choices are all affected moving forward. We've had sad stories how some of these young people turn to drugs when they grow up and others end up on the street. So we can only hope that this young girl can get all the support she needs moving forward and hopefully she can move on from this incident. According to neighbours, this type of crime is out of character for Wayne. You see, he had a lengthy rap sheet prior to the incident in August of 2024, but none were sexual, rather for crimes such as robbery. When the news reached out to people who knew him, they had this to say. Okay. I know him, I'll him through the laundry Every time I come to the laundromat, he happens to come in, in later in the uh, weekend, like around uh, Thursday, Friday, that time. Around this time, around 4.30, 5 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. Okay, and, and you heard what happened, right? Um, yes, I did from other um, news media. Yes, I heard. I'm shocked. I don't, I didn't think uh, this would happen in this type of neighborhood here. I know they have some mentally challenged in here, but I didn't think he would be like one of them. I thought he was a, a normal working gentleman because he was, his attire was always neat. Um, he's very tall, uh, very slim, uh, and he was quiet you know, to himself. He didn't, he didn't say anything to anybody. He just did his laundry, you know, that's it. Didn't fold his clothes, didn't do anything, just wash, dry, you know, that's it. Do you have any follow-up? Yeah, sure. Um, how long did he live, reside here in the building? Myself? No, that, that person, the suspect. Oh, that I don't know. See, I'm from the other side of the development, so I just come over here to do my laundry, and I go back home. Uh, as far as anyone else around here, I really don't uh, communicate with the other tenants here. I'm a more quiet person. I deal with myself and in, in and out. But how long has he been coming to do clothes at the laundromat? So far since I've seen him, uh, it was like four times uh, within two months. So yeah. fairly recent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I noticed he was new because I, I haven't seen him before. And when he started coming in, I said, oh, we have new tenants, you know? And I just, okay, left it like that and just watch him do his laundry and that's it. Yeah, so he's relatively quiet? And he was always quiet. He never said anything to anyone. He was like making complaints about uh, can you take your clothes off the machine or you know like some people would do. He never made a fuss, never did anything. Just waited, used the other machines that were empty. When they finished, went into the dryer, took his clothes out of the dryer, didn't fold them, just put them all in a bag to take them inside of his house and fold them up, which normal people, you know, some people do here. So know. as a grandmother yourself, like, how's your reaction to something heinous this guy did? I'm appalled because I, I, I can't see this good-looking, tall gentleman doing this to a nine-year-old, you know? Um, uh, I'm, I'm upset because it's for my development. Um, 
day, they should be aware of who is coming into the development, you know, not just accepting anybody in because they need a apartment to take it. I don't know how long he was living here. Uh, all I know is from the time that I saw him, which is like three or four times. Uh, last question, um, what's your suggestions to you know, family members or grandparents about dealing with children, like going on a supermarket trip or like that, what, what should they take from, from a tragic situation uh, like Be that? aware of your, your children, don't let them go astray, um, keep them by your side, uh, just keep, be mindful of what they're doing and who they talk to, uh, stranger danger. My thing, you know. Can you spell your name? S A N D E R O. Michelle. Michelle, do you ever want to give a last name or just use your first name? Well, you can use my last name too, Michelle Sanders. Michelle Sanders. Yes. And you've been residing on this building for how long? Uh, I've been here close to ten years now. All right, thank you so much. No problem. I'm very sorry you had to hear this. Yeah, because it's a shock to me. I n I never knew. And now I see so many news media coming yeah. around. I said, my God, what the heck happened here? So now I know. I'm sorry this happened in this development here. I wish it never did. This just shows you how this, uh, how people can be. They look one way and totally opposite. Thank you very much, ma'am. No So it's unclear why Wayne did what he did, but at the end of the day, he was a depraved, sick individual. For all we know though, he may be responsible for other similar unsolved incidents in the area. I mean, after all, his actions were so brazen. Who knows what else he may be responsible for?